What's up, guys? Welcome into the final drive presented by Microsoft Surface. Alongside Haley Elwood, I'm Chris Harey. Chargers win week one in D.C. against the Washington football team, 20 to 16. A great way to kick off the 2021 NFL season, Haley. Such a great way to kick that season off. And I know we've made a lot of jokes about final drives and having to talk about final drives in the past, but this was a really good one. The final drive that the Chargers had in this game literally sealed the win for them. So a lot of really bright spots, especially for a team whose starters didn't necessarily play in the preseason all together at all to kind of come out and assemble what they did. Of course, it wasn't 100% clean, but that's to be expected in week one. But to come out and eke out a win like that, really solid for these guys. And we'll get to that final drive because it was the most important in the game, even though they, they didn't score. They, they held the ball. They iced the game in the fourth quarter. But let's start with the first drive, Haley. Yeah. It, it was nearly perfect. Um, they scripted it to a T. Justin Herbert on his game from the beginning. Um, Austin Eckler punches it in. It's exactly what you wanted to see from Justin Herbert in this Joe Lombardi offense, you alluded to it. We didn't see any of these starters. We frankly didn't know what to expect. Uh, pretty perfect at the beginning. Yeah, six for six, 40 yards, just marched down the field, 10 plays, 75 yards, capped it off with that Eckler touchdown. There was no pressure on that drive on Justin Herbert. He barely honestly faced pressure at all throughout the game. And I'm sure we'll talk about that too, especially with this, you know, vaunted Washington defensive front, but it really was what you wanted to see. And I think it was really important as well to have everyone come out and just be really comfortable with a script that they felt really, really comfortable with. And then, you know, obviously you make adjustments after that, but everyone just looked, it, it really, like you said, put Herbert in the best position possible. He was just dropping dimes, nailing it down the field and to cap it off with that Eckler touchdown, a guy who, you know, we didn't know if he was going to play this week. He didn't practice two days last week, but he got in there. It was really what you wanted to see because we also talk a lot about starting hot and, and starting fast. And this team did that. They set the tone. They really held on to a lead up until that third quarter, but then they gained it back in the fourth, but to come out and start seven, nothing. Awesome. Really, really great. Yeah, it also had, had 15 carries, 57 yards. And, and that's kind of where you want him, especially when you have Larry Rountree and, and Justin Jackson mm -hmm. and Joshua Kelly, who didn't play in this game. But but to have that stable of running backs, Austin said it himself. He, he wants to keep himself fresh and, and maximize the touches. So you, you saw that in week one. What can you say about the combination of, of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, Haley? I mean, Justin, he spread the ball around eight different receivers, caught a ball but you just combine Keenan and Mike's numbers 25 targets 17 catches 182 yards and a touchdown I think really one of the craziest things when I looked at the the stat sheet and I'm looking at it right now is there were six receiving targets where their longest catch went for double digits and it went really over fifth everyone was over 15 yards so you you talk about chunk plays in this game these guys were just getting yardage just down the field these chunk plays I mean Keenan his longest was 17 that came in the fourth Mike also um for that 20 yard I believe third down conversion that he had but you know a guy like Jalen Guyton I mean three receptions for 49 yards his longest was 22 and KJ Hill too I was also really impressed with those two young guys especially someone like KJ who didn't have a preseason last year was kind of you know figuring things out on the fly he makes this roster we heard a lot because of what he can do on special teams but he was actually he was a factor yesterday and so you talk about Keenan and Mike and you expect those guys to be what they are Mike Williams I think was just extremely impressive overall because we're so used to seeing him be the jump ball guy be the 50, 50 guy, 75, 25, as I believe Justin Herbert said, but to actually get involved in the offensive game plan and end up with, you know, eight receptions for 82 yards. Awesome. But also to see some of those younger guys get involved really, really huge. And I think they'll only come along. We're only in week one. We got what 16 more of these left. And so to have all those weapons on offense is really, really big for this team. Hey, if week one was any indication, Joe Lombardi wasn't lying this offseason when he said Mike Williams was going to get a heavy load at that X receiver position. Mike, with 12 targets, a career high eight catches, 82 yards. Mm -hmm. And that touchdown in the fourth quarter, Haley, that, that was the, the momentum changing sequence, I think, in this game. Justin Herbert throws an interception. Kaiser White gets the ball right back, forces a fumble. Kenneth Murray recovers. 
a few plays later, Justin to Mike. Um, we didn't see much of Mike. We didn't see much of any of these guys, but, but really when we talk about Mike Williams, he was out for a good portion of camp, just mm -hmm. resting and, and trying to recover from that injury. So we really didn't know exactly what to expect from Mike and to come out this way and to have that touchdown in the fourth quarter, uh, it's got to have, uh, I, I guess Chargers fans, I'll say this, they'll have, they have a smile on their face today, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's big. And I think it's big for him too. Like you said, he was injured a lot during training camp. He was battling through and he really wouldn't have played in the preseason the way that this team decided to not play other guys. So it wasn't like really, we would have seen him, but he missed out on some time, but everyone last week, you know, rest assured Mike's got it. He's good. You go back to Joe Lombardi's line in, I believe it was just over summer where he said, you know, if I were a betting man, I would bet big numbers from him on the stat sheet. That's for sure. And that is what we saw yesterday. We really, really saw his emergence. I also love when you run through that fourth quarter sequence, because the way I wrote it down in my notebook is like fourth arrow, Herbert interception. Oh, yeah. arrow Gibson fumble. And then arrow Mike Williams touchdown, because it really was just a crazy sequence of events that ultimately you felt like once the chargers did score to that point of the, the Justin Herbert, Mike Williams touchdown, it felt like they got the momentum back. This was a game to me that flipped a lot, especially when Ryan Fitzpatrick goes out, Taylor Heineke comes in, but it really felt like at that point, the chargers, once they got that ball back eventually again, which they did, they weren't going to let it go. And that's really what happened. And we'll talk about Justin now, 31 to 47, 337 yards. He had the touchdown. He had the interception. He had that fluky fumble <laughs> out of the end zone thing. that I think everybody, everybody was scratching their head about that. But the way that Justin played and the way that this offense played on third down, Haley, 14 of 19, we hadn't yeah. seen that in a decade. I think the last team to have 14 third down conversions, the Baltimore Ravens in 2011. Justin was awesome on third down last year. He's continuing that. And that fourth quarter drive, that final drive, they didn't score. It was the most important because they went for it. They were backed up in their own territory. And they said, you know what? We're not going to play conservative. We're going to try to win this football game and ice it. And that's what they did. Yeah. I mean, to go back to the third down point, almost 74% efficiency. Come on. Like if you are hitting those numbers, it's crazy. You should be winning games. And then on that last drive, I think really what, what was one of the most I don't know, I guess impressive things to me was the aggression was the fact that it's not like you're just kind of running the ball a couple of yards here, trying to chew up clock. They are throwing it. They literally were throwing it. They had three third downs, I believe, or I'm sorry, they converted four third downs. Three of them went for large gains, 17 when you needed 16, but then you had a third and three that went for 19 and a third and seven, which went for 20, which I believe was that Mike Williams catch. They're just, you know, they were acting on it. They were getting there. And I think that's really one of the things that also we hadn't seen from this Chargers team in a really long time. And Staley talked about it yesterday that he said they felt like they were a fourth quarter team, that they've talked a lot about the team of teams and that, you know, if one side of the ball doesn't, you know, maybe pick up their end of the weight, the other one will kind of come in and help them out. But they really, really were able to solidify that drive to hold on to the ball for almost seven full minutes and never yeah. let go. And also again, not just run it, not just do, you know, run plays to kind of take up clock to be aggressive and throw on third down. That's big. And I think to Justin, they talked about this on the broadcast yesterday and, and we've heard it a lot too, that this is a very complex offense and they were throwing a lot at him, but Joe Lombardi said his study habits and the way that he sort of approaches that side of the game he felt like he could take it on. And if there was a mistake, he said he wouldn't make the same mistake twice. And I think you've seen that. I think obviously I go back to last year with that conversation I had with ESPN's Molly McGrath, where she talked about, Hey, he's extremely smart in the classroom, but he's going to apply those same techniques and those same study habits to the football playbook. And in his second season, learning a new offense and one that is relatively complex, pretty safe to say he's got it down <laughs> after what we saw yesterday. <laughs> I would say so. And Haley, it's one thing to, to learn a new offense with new personnel, but he knew these guys. Yeah. I mean, that rapport with Keenan, that rapport with Mike, we saw more of it with Keenan last year, but to, mm -hmm. to see how he connected and clicked with Mike on, on Sunday was very impressive. Guyton, KJ Hill, all these guys were there last year. So I, I think it helps the learning curve when you have the same personnel and you have a guy who's as intelligent 
as Justin is. Defensively, if we flip it to defense, uh, Brandon Staley played this Washington football team last year when he was the defensive coordinator of the Rams and, uh, and shut them down pretty well. Uh, he did the same uh, last uh, – or on Sunday, rather. And w- when you hold the team to 3 of 10 on third down, 259 total yards and just 16 points, when you have an offense like the Chargers have, you're going to win more than you lose. Yeah, it was definitely balanced. And then you look at someone like Kenneth Murray, who led the team in tackles, picking up where he left off last year as he led the team the entire season in tackles as a rookie, I believe, set that record, breaking Derwin's record. Derwin second on the team with seven combined tackles. Great to see him out there again, just because of what he brings, not only on the field, but also from a leadership perspective. And then, you know, a guy like Asante Samuel Jr., five combined tackles. He did, you know, he draw that, he, excuse me, he drew that one uh, penalty at one point, but all of this is a learning process, but he's out there. He was in that number two role that he had earned from his performance in camp. This is a unit that I think is obviously going to kind of click and gel as the season moves on again. I mean, Joey had talked about last week, you know, we'll see kind of what the misdirection looks like and how it all kind of works when you're out on the field. Also, they were facing a quarterback who they, they faced two in this game. You game plan for Ryan Fitzpatrick. He goes out, then you have this you know, Heineke kind of come in and take over the rest of the game. But I think this is, you know, what you saw was definitely it. I don't want to use the term impressive again, but it was something that was actually, it was really good for this chargers team to see them come together, to see them again, you know, kind of assemble that team of teams, if you will. But, um, Hey, you know, again, to hold them to 16 total, and then obviously have your offense come back and, and win and put your defense back out there and hold them in the fourth. Pretty good. Yeah. And it wasn't perfect. You mentioned Asante Samuel had that defensive pass interference that led to a field goal. Joey had a pair of 15 yard penalties, yeah. uh, very tough penalties. Um, and I, I think one of those led to points. So, you know, it's week one, right? You you see the the unit that they have. I, I agree with you. I think it's only going to get tighter and tighter as the season progresses and some of these young guys start to step up a little bit. Uh, special teams, Tristan Viscano uh, made both of his field goal attempts, both of his extra point attempts, and Ty Long punted twice. Thank you. That's, I mean, that, that's what you want. I don't want to see – I love Ty Long. I don't want to see Ty Long out there much. That was a, that was the joke that the Jerry Swinton made last week, right? When, when Popper yeah. was trying to figure out who was going to be back on, uh, you know, Gunner, I think Gunner. I think uh, yeah, Gunner. exactly. And he's like, Hey, we prefer never to punt. He's like, love Ty. We prefer, you know, never to have to get in that situation where our offense is just cruising down the field. So twice in this game, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty good there. Time of possession, 36 minutes you hold the football to. Yeah. And, and you know, it's just these little things, Haley. They didn't win the turnover battle. Usually when you lose the turnover battle on the road, it, it doesn't bode well for you. You lose the game. But to, to hold the ball for 36 minutes, I said it in the first half. I, I think the, the Chargers defense was only on the field maybe 17, 18, 19 plays in that first half, which I, I think bode well for them in the second half, especially in that D.C. heat. Uh, week one, uh, that uh, Washington football team defense was out there for quite a bit. And, yeah. you know, we, we also have to we have to recognize what Rashawn Slater did. Uh, they, they were on the field for 81 plays. He played 81 snaps. He hadn't played the game in two years. Uh, I'm not counting the, the 20 snaps that he got against the Rams in that preseason mm-hmm. opener. In the preseason. But, to, but to do what he did against... Montez Sweat and Chase Young in week one, going 81 plays, not having played in two years on the road, protecting the franchise quarterback and Justin Herbert. I'd say that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And not to mention, he sort of battled through a little injury thing in training camp too. And I know that I think he really wanted to go out during that Seattle game and they held him off out of precaution and a lot was made. We talked about it. A lot was made about the matchup with Chase Young and going up against Chase Young and and what they did in college, or excuse me, I guess I should say what Slater did against him in college, but really to go out there and have the performance that he did 
it was impressive to use that word again. I, I think I saw a tweet this morning. I was trying to find it and I can't, but I think it was, I don't think he allowed a pressure on Justin Herbert. And I think to have that trust in your rookie left tackle so early in week one, this was a huge, huge, huge test. We've talked about this Washington D line and, and their front all week long, some of the best in the game, but I think you're right in the sense of the time of possession and how much that defense was out there. You do get tired. You, do, you, I can't imagine what that feels like to, to have to play in that heat and all of that. But I just think um, the offensive line too, as a whole, when you look at Slater, but then all the other guys, you know, they were a unit that didn't, they hadn't played together. They never played together in the preseason, but there was some talk during, I remember those joint practices with the 49ers that that really was a good test for them. It really was to get out there, but this was really their first time in live action. I know Brian Balaga went out, Storm Norton came in, but he actually did a serviceable job. And this team, that unit, excuse me, really, really did essentially what they were hired mostly to do, what they came to the Chargers to do. It was impressive because, again, when, when you know that none of these guys have actually played in a, in a game before and to have that mm -hmm. be your first matchup and to play as well as they did. And I'm, I'm sure there's stuff on, on tape, but they're, they're going to have to clean up for week two against the Cowboys. But um, it, it's – I mean, to, to be what Rashad Slater was on, on Sunday, I mean, hats off to the guy. I, yeah. He's done everything right. He's He's been awesome during training camp. Going up against Joey Bosa, I think, helps – uh, on a daily basis when, when you're preparing for teams like the Washington football team. Um, a couple of things to clean up. They were, I think, two of six in the red zone. Uh, that's got to be better moving mm -hmm. forward. Haley, especially, especially against the Cowboys uh, coming yeah. in here uh, with a, a few days extra rest, and they have an explosive offense. So you're going to have to maximize your opportunities down there. Yeah. Also a Cowboys team. that's probably a little salty from what happened yeah, last Thursday. They've had extra time to stew on it and they put up what 29 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, which we heard all last year and, and saw and saw in the Super Bowl what they did to the chiefs. I mean, that's no joke. So, you know, that you're going to, yeah, you need to clean that up to get ready for them because they definitely look like a high powered offense. Dak is back if you will. Um, I'm actually really excited though, for that game, just to see kind of the, the duel, if you will, between Dak Prescott and Justin Herbert. I, I wrote some notes down. I think it was um, Prescott had 58 pass attempts last week. Herbert had 47. So these guys are doing it through the air. I'm really excited though, but yeah, you'll clean it up. I mean, you go back and you look at the tape, there is tape now on a, on an opponent that you are going to face. So the game planning from this point on is going to be really interesting because you're not just relying on piecing stuff together, maybe from last year or whatever it is you have games, you get to look at it and we'll see what happens in that home opener. SoFi stadium this week, get excited this, fans this back. <laughs> fans back get excited a lot of star power on the field too especially yeah. when you look at those receivers with cd lamb and amari cooper mike williams keenan allen ezekiel elliott it's it's a an early fun matchup against an nfc east opponent see if they can go two and oh early in the season against the nfc east and Haley, finally i, I want to end on this and, and recognize the head coach of the chargers brandon staley his mm -hmm. first win uh this has been a long off season talking about yeah. this team and what it's going to look like. And we finally got to see it. And uh, he acknowledged at, at the, at the press conference, it was his mom's birthday. And I, I think it was just so neat for him to get his first NFL win living out his dream on his mom's birthday. That's what he said. I thought that that was a really, really sweet anecdote. And I think it it's a reminder too when you go the entire off season and, and, you watch someone like him in his position, you know, at these press conferences and answering all sorts of questions, whether it be about football, whether it be about what happens on the field, philosophy off of it, whatever. But to hear that kind of personal anecdote, it sort of just, it, it made the whole moment just feel a little different in that sense. And it was really sweet. And, and it was awesome for him to get that. And, and when you watched him kind of, you know, in the locker room after the game, passing out the game balls, which we posted, you could just tell it, it, it really, really did mean something. And the way that he also, when he was talking about his mom, you could feel it. You could definitely, definitely, definitely feel it. And I think, you know, Hey, this team is one and oh, we'll see what happens from here as, as they go on, you know, they do, we've, we've talked about their next few games and sort of the, the craziness and kind of toughness of what's ahead, but, but this was a tough test too. And they passed.
and you needed that and you're starting to slowly see the culture being built, right? Yeah. They, they talked about our way and, and all these things in the off season, but, but you need to actually get on the grass and play a game and win a game and, and, and bond with these guys. And they did that. It's, it's one of 17 is a long way to go, but it, it was really neat to see the guys in the locker room. Cause I, I really truly think that they're, they're starting to believe they got something special here. Yep. And they've talked about it too, but like you said, you can talk about it, but then you have to go out and do it. And they did that yesterday. And we mentioned it wasn't a totally clean operation, but rarely is it ever, if you will. And when you come out in the wind column, that's really what's most important at the end of the day. That's right. And we're back at SoFi Stadium Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we're going to do the final drive on Monday mornings. Every Monday morning, if we play on Monday night, it's going to be on Tuesday morning. So the day after every game, uh, we'll also try to get beat writers, other guests on uh, throughout the season as well. But uh, we uh, we're happy to be back. I I'll tell you that it's been a, a long off season, and uh, to get the final drive back, and for the Chargers to have their best performance on the final drive against the Washington football team, only fitting. So that's going to do it for us. For Haley Elwood, I'm Chris Harey. This has been the final drive presented by Microsoft Surface. <laughs>